Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome again to another one of my reading streams. Um, if you are new to this, I have been uh, traversing the anvil space and reading through lots of great uh, leaders of their people articles that uh, you anvilite beans have been creating. If you are not familiar with World Anvil, World Anvil is an awesome world building website where you can actually build your own world there's lots of resources for you um, there's a lot of community there's lots of activity there's lots of encouragement and there are lots of tools that you can use to help to create your world i do have my world there um multiple worlds there in fact uh, my current project is secret agent someone if you have heard of him and I've made my own World Anvil page about it. So this is the hub where you can find all things Secret Agent Someone. And you can easily go to worldanvil.com and make your own world if you don't have one already. I will put that link in the chat. And you are heavily encouraged to go there. Um, many of you viewers have um, already made worlds there and you are considered anvilites who are World Anvil Beans. Uh, I do see Colonel's here. Quick hello before I start to get the head down. Hello, uh, Colonel. A Cedar Hornet says, hi, hi, hello. Um, I don't know if there's an ad showing right now. I still have not, um, you know, actually straightened out that ad issue, unfortunately. I was not able to. Hopefully I will be able to after this stream. Um, but I do have, uh, it shows me when I can click an ad and make an ad run. So maybe if I decide to make an ad run, it won't let ads run when I don't want them to. That's an experiment to try. Right now they are not allowing me to click ads, which makes me think that an ad is running. And Colonel does say five ads already. Oh man, yes, I was right. There is an ad running right now. Um, so in the meantime, while there are ads running, I will run my own ad. Um, you, if you are watching in the future, or if you are watching uh, not live, then uh, you won't be able to interact as much as you can as if you were live in the chat, but that's okay. I appreciate you as well for watching in the future. Um, the uh, Cedar Hunt says, for things I will never use or buy. So I guess um, Colonel is saying there are five ads running and Cedar Hana is saying these are things that are not appealing. Unfortunately, sometimes ads do not, um, nine times out of 10, if you're watching an ad, either you already wanted the thing so you don't need to see the ad or the ad is totally irrelevant and um, in that case, you know, you're never going to even use the product anyway. Uh, Colonel says ads are over here for me and exactly useless. Yes. So as I was saying, um, a lot of ads are like either they're of something that you would already use if you didn't see the ad or the ad is totally useless and you will not want to patronize um, that company or product anyway. So, yeah. Uh, there's hardly a time when an ad makes me want to buy something. Either I already want to buy it, or, you know, it's just a, uh, you know. Oh, I see Basic Dragon is in the chat. I got an ad for an energy drink. I get headaches from them. Yeah, I do not drink energy drinks either. No. Um, personally, I do not. Um, yes, but welcome Basic Dragon and thank you for enduring those ads. I apologize that you were greeted with an ad. Um, yeah, so if the ads are over for most people, uh, that would be ideal. And we can get started. Um, I just realized that I'm, I'm at 103 followers already and I thank all of you guys for following me. I never expected to, um, you know get so many followers so fast. Cedra Hanit says, generally I stream commercials free 
or watch European television, which is so much nicer. <laughs> Europe runs commercials at the end of a show for 10 or so minutes straight. So you just leave to make tea and cucumber curry chicken sandwiches, which is something that Cedar Hanet uh, mentions a lot. I'm sure you love your cucumber curry chicken sandwiches. And that does sound quite nice, like an inter uh, intermission. When you're going to watch the movies, you see there's previews before the mu movie, and the trailers run after the movie, and you know that during that time, you don't have to worry about the movie. So a TV running like that is really, that sounds really nice. Unfortunately, um, I mean, they used to do that over here in the U.S. They used to put, you know, uh, ads you know but as just as YouTube <laughs> you see YouTube used to have it where only one ad runs before the video only on monetized accounts um, and now they said well not like people are going to not watch YouTube we can put two ads and then they said you know it's not like people are not gonna watch YouTube we can put ads during it's like it's not like people are not going to watch YouTube. We can put three ads at the beginning. Like, so, I mean, people are forced to deal with it, and they're right. They're getting more money from more ads. But, you know, it's not like people aren't going to watch YouTube anymore. Colonel says, UK different every 15 to 20 minutes during a program and between them on most channels. Wow. So, yeah, um, that is what I'm used to. Uh, usually, if there's a show, unless it's like public television. Public television, they have uh, shows that are not interrupted by commercials, and then they have like an ad break between the shows, but most of the ads are not really like ad ads, but they're like the public television um, PSAs and different things like that, advertising other things on the channel, av uh, advertising maybe sponsors of shows and stuff like that. That is what I'm used to. Yes, Cedar Hanet says PBS is nice. That is um, nice. Even the children's programs, the educational adult programs, uh, that is a nice experience. So that's what it kind of sounds like you're saying uh, with the European television because uh, that is not that's not what I'm used to with regular TV. BBC channels are the only ones that don't have as far as I know. So yeah, usually um, those kinds of public television, local television channels try not to have too many ads because they are kind of you know, they're non-profit anyway. Uh, the mainstream channels are raking up the cash in ads. Uh, but anyway, we're totally off subject. But I'm glad that the ads are over for you guys. So, I should be able to head into this uh, sheet, spreadsheet, and see who I can read. If somebody is in the chat right now... Um, if you are a world anvilite and you have an article that you wrote for summer camp that is a great leader of their people and you would like me to read it, please redeem a read my article, please. Um, little thing from the shop, I guess. I don't know what to call it. Um, just go ahead and use those wisps. It only takes one. And then put your World Anvil username there so that I can find you in the spreadsheet and read your article. Um, it just takes a quick moment. And if nobody else is in the chat that uh, I haven't already read an article of, that's totally fine. Uh, but if you are in the chat and you would like me to read your article, please shout yourself out. Um, BBC channel. So uh, C. Johanna says BBC Kent for the win. And um, Colonel says have an ad for an ads free TV. <laughs> for great leader. Wordy girl for great leader, says Colonel. Oh, well, I try. <laughs> uh, and oh, a random guy. I'm sorry. A random guy just uh redeemed read my article please and on a world anvil they are maestro x7 yes i will read your article i will search you on the spreadsheet da -da, da -da. there we are and this is sovereign nimke yane yan 
Yan? Not sure. Um, please do correct me if I am pronouncing things wrong, which is something that I've said probably 17 times <laughs> per stream. <laughs> Yayin. Yayin. Yayin? Yayin. Yayin? I think. Regardless, it's in the chat, a random guy. Please click a random guy's link so that you can read along, just in case there are things. Oh, it's a relatively short article, by the way. And, um, yeah. Oh, 101 Colonel says, okay, before I get sucked in and want to hear more about these marvelous articles, I'll disappear for the night. Bye. Aw, oh, you have a blessed night, Colonel. I know that it's very late for where you are, and I appreciate you stopping by for just a minute, even though it was just a minute. Um, have a blessed night. Thank you so much. Um, yes, so this is Sovereign Nimke Yayin. Yayin. I'm not sure. Please do let me know if it's Yayin or Yayin. Or, I just don't like to mispronounce things. Okay, Lord Nimke is the fifth Sovereign to be elected Yayin. Yes, Yayin. Okay, that's the second one. Lord Nimke is the fifth sovereign to be elected to the highest executive office in the Kazed system government. Born to the founding house of Ya'in, Nimke has long been a driven man, growing up during the tense reigns of sovereigns Kamu Beya and his predecessor, Beshubu Zmaev. Zmaev. Nimke desired to help his house and his fellow Kavukri, Kavukri, not sure, of Kazed, bring an end to the painful Tmizin Iluid house war. He, in fact, was elected primarily on that very promise to end the war as well as refocus the realm in expanding its infrastructure. Nimke believed that the only way to end the war was to strengthen the power of the sovereign against the noble houses and, to l a lesser degree, the conclave. The position of sovereign was a mostly ceremonial role before Nimke. He argued that since the conclave and houses were unable to end the war, only the sovereign was left with the power to do so. He also invoked a desire to bring his position to parity with the high king of all Kvukri back on the home world. Combined, Nimke was able to sway many houses eager to end the war in a new way, since the other paths failed miserably. Nimke was not blind to the possibility of abuse of power that a strengthened sovereign could wield, and thus arranged to create a constitution to limit both the sovereign and the conclave so that a repetition of the Tzmezin, Mezin, Ilioid, war wouldn't happen again. Much of this would be hammered out after the war. Before his time as a sovereign, Nimke worked under Meulia, a mentor of his, in various duties of Gimki Station, including some scout and charting runs around the moons of Tsismato. Nimke would switch to politics after opposing crews of Ilio Yad, Iluyad, and Tmizin ships fought each other openly on Gimki Station. Alrighty. That was a very short to the point article. It did tell a story about this sovereign. And it was very interesting. Iluyad. 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 I believe, is what a random guy is trying to tell me how to pronounce it. Um, Overlord Forte says, hello, hello. Um, yes, so, yes, my advice there would be mostly just pronunciations. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, read this and uh, be able to pronounce all the words. I know it may be inspired by a, another language or... Uh, some of these may be I I like associate. most of these are um, oh no you know what 
I think that I don't have my headphones plugged in because I just saw that somebody subscribed, but I did not hear someone. I hope you guys heard someone. Thank you, Anointer, for following me. And yes, um, most of you probably heard Secret Agent Someone, voiced by John McNally, uh, say obligatory associate, which is what he says when people follow me. So thank you so much, Anointer, for following. Um, yes, now, uh, what I was trying to say was, uh, a lot of times when these words are taken from other languages and things like that, if the article is written in English, it is advised that you at least put a little bit of pronunciation guide for some words that may be kind of hard to pronounce in English. Also, I noticed that the sidebar here is completely empty. Um, if you would like to fill that up, there's lots you can do to fill it up. You can um, put article blocks to some of these uh, things that are referenced. Not only are they hard to pronounce, but they're also curious. I would like to know more about some of these things and people and places. Um, so I know that there may be articles that exist that aren't done yet. It would be great to link those when they are complete. Um, also, even if you don't want to make full articles about them, you can just either add a tooltip, or if you don't have access to tooltips, you can just put in the sidebar a little link to each one and say, oh, Beshubu, Beshubu is this person. Or, um, you know, there was a couple of places, like Zamato, Z Zamzo, or I don't know how to pronounce that either. Um, but you can just kind of put little um, snippets of what those things are so that people can be more, um, you know, involved in the story. Uh, a random die says, would the pronunciation guide go in the sidebar or would you recommend that to go? Okay, so yes, so either in the sidebar would be good. If you are, um, if you have access to creating tooltips, there's something called a tooltip that when you hover over the word, a little bubble pops up and you can put it in there but not everybody has access to those um, so I would go as far as to just say you could put it right next to it in parentheses if you want to uh, like if you have the Kazed system government Kazed and then you could just put right there in parentheses how it's pronounced or something like that but if you think that's gonna break up the um, article too much then of course you can just say key pronunciation key or something in the sidebar and just put those things uh, you don't even have to say pronunciation key uh, actually you can just list the um, things that we want to know more about and then like put the word then put in parentheses how to pronounce it and then put under it a little tidbit about it um, like so Kazed, and then it tells how to pronounce it then it will say well this is the district so-and-so whatever district uh, ruled by whoever and then Beshbu then we can put in parentheses how to pronounce their name and then we can say this is a person who uh, you know was a descendant of this person or whatever you know so it's there's multiple ways to do it uh, without you know ruining your flow of the world so however you choose if you want to put it in uh, right there in parentheses in the article you can if you want to put it in the sidebar you can so it all just depends on you but I would just suggest that you do put it somewhere if you can um, yeah that will just help when people are trying to read it feel more immersed and not like they are um, you know wondering how to pronounce it and not being able to but yes overall um, I appreciate this article it was short to the point it's overviewed a little uh, snippet of the Sovereign's life and what made him such a good leader. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that one. I will mark it that I read it. Um, next, I see Basic Dragon has redeemed a read my article. So we will find Basic Dragon in this spreadsheet as well. And we will... Oh, it's right there, <laughs> right afterwards. They um, have written an article titled Layla. 
And let's see um, how this goes. Um, a random guy says, thanks for the advice. Thank you for allowing me to read this uh, character on stream. I appreciate it. And it was very interesting. Oh, yes. Uh, what I was trying to say also, though, is if you don't want to fill up the sidebar at all, there is an option to also hide the sidebar. So just in case the sidebar is just totally not useful to you. But I would advise to make use of it because it will help the article to not just be a big block of text, but also have some interesting little things here. Even if you don't put art, you can put like those, like we were saying, pronunciation guides and stuff like that over there. But now we are heading over to Layla by Basic Dragon. I suppose I will have to rise if nobody else will, says Layla. Layla was born in November of 1857 to a wealthy merchant and a housewife. She was born with the same ability that her father had, the ability to be able to tell when somebody was lying to her or another person within viewing distance. Layla had a happy upbringing and enjoyed learning and reading. She did not enjoy writing, and every time she tried to write something, it looked like a crow had stumbled over the paper. She had planned to become a teacher, but the violent skirmishes of 1881, link to show us, and this is what I meant by a tooltip. You see how this is actually a link to an article, but it's in tooltip form. When you hover over it, a little, little, little pop-up pops up, and it doesn't tell too much information, but it just tells you that the skirmish of 1881 was a conflict of werewolves and vampires. So now we know that what that was. So it doesn't have to be an extensive, long, little, you know, whole par paragraph about something, but it can just be a little pop-up that tells how to pronounce something or a brief instance of who this person is or where this place is or what this is referencing. But besides that, um, the skirmishes of 1881, which we learned, have been attributed to werewolves and vampires conflicting, hindered her education. Instead, she became the first president of iMorg. And when you wonder, what is iMorg? There is a link to that. And while there isn't a tooltip, you can still click it and figure out about it. Oh, wow. My boyfriend is a chef at a restaurant in Rosham called Morgs. He works really odd hours, though. So we wonder what it is. So I guess maybe they are um, posing under a restaurant. But it looks like it's the International Mediators Organization. Educates and employs mediators. And then there's a link to what mediators are. So this is one of the reasons why I... Um, put the link in the chat because there's going to be a lot of things in these articles sometimes and you're going to want to learn more about it and I can't cover everything on stream but those things seem interesting to me and if you would like to find out more about them please click the link in the chat and read more about Layla by Basic Dragon. Let's see Overlord Forte says playing around with my article based on that commentary. The uh, superscript is also a possibility for a pronunciation kit key yes so yeah when you um also can put in a little tiny script you can do small you can do subscript or a su superscript and uh it will help you to have the word smaller or bigger or up or down you know uh and then that's a good way to add in pronunciations great um tip overlord forte also says though it will inject into the text directly yes it will so it will be kind of like when you see um, H2O and the little 2 is floating above and it's little and small. Um, that's how it will be like. Uh, or when you say first, second, third and the little ST is up small. Um, you could do that as well if you want to. That's what that um, coding will do to the text. Um, or you can just put it right there in parentheses next to it. But anyway... Um, let's get back to Layla. The article is not too uh, long. Uh, friends. Layla had a wide array of acquaintances. She knew everyone in the then pretty small town. Most people liked her. Her close friendship circle was also pretty large. She had around 12 close friends and 4 best friends. One of these best friends was a man, which her family did not like. However, they let her do what she wanted. Interesting. 
family. Layla was an only child, but she grew up with a couple of cousins and her parents' relatives around her. She dated a couple of guys growing up, but she was never very interested in romantic endeavors. At the age of 31, she had a son. However, she never married anyone, which was a little bit of a scandal. Psychology. Layla was an extrovert that enjoyed spending time with her friends and relatives. She was usually laid back, but when she felt that somebody needed to take chain, take, take charge, she would. So, yeah, she's a chill person, but if she looks around and nobody else is taking charge, she'll do it. Physical. Layla was a short woman with light brown hair and silver gray eyes who enjoyed wearing comfortable dresses. She had a slight limp because of an injury as a child. Motivation. Learning and teaching are Layla's motivation. She enjoys it, and it's what she wanted to do. She expected to do it as a general teacher for general knowledge, but she ended up as a leader for the mediators. Hobbies. Spending time with friends, learning new things, traveling short distances, and playing board games with her friends, as well as reading, was the things that she usually did with her leisure time. Then we have the good uh, sidebar here. She was 79 years old. When she died, she was a super natural human. Um, yeah. So this is nice, and it has like links to the Mediators organization and theme song. It also links to YouTube for a song. If you like to hear a song that is um, putting you in the mind of this character, Layla. And that's an interesting note. Um, thank you so much for sharing this basic dragon. And I would suggest, though, the sidebar is almost even. I feel as if... If you would link the YouTube video as a video that you could play in page, that might just extend the sidebar just enough so that you can actually, you know, uh, it can be even with the rest. Or if you were to add a little bit of art or something like that. Um, personally, also, I do like to put the uh, YouTube video in the page so that they can play it directly without having to leave and link to somewhere else. So if I click this now, it would go to another page. Um, but I will give you an example. Oh, there it is. Um, this is what I did. You see how I put this video here in the page, in the sidebar, so. Hey, you. Okay, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but um, this can be played right here in page, uh, which can help you to like be reading while you're listening to the song, which is kind of good. So you don't have to feel like you're getting taken to another a page. Just my personal opinion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Th other than that, this is an awesome article, Basic Dragon. It tells a lot of information without telling too much. It still makes me very curious about the world. I like how you linked things that... Um, we would be interested in and then there are still some mysteries that we don't know about which makes us want to read way more about your world i like the font is a nice size uh the the general layout of the page is quite neat and the feel of the page just it's really nice so i like this article thank you so much basic dragon for sharing it Basic Dragon says, I will eventually put a profile image there and add more information about what she actually did. Time ran away for me, so I didn't really have time to finish it. Like all of us, uh, there's so many of my articles that are like that. And I'm like, ah, I will finish them at the end. And then summer camp ended and I did not finish them in time. But it's okay. I'm glad that you got the words on the page, and that's what's really important. Getting those words out there on the page. So I applaud you. Thank you so much for sharing that article, Basic Dragon. And I encourage you guys to go check out the world, because there's so much that I can't read on stream, because I have lots to get through. Basic Dragon says, yeah, I'm writing up more to put there during this. Oh, wow. Great. Awesome. Uh, I've seen people putting their stuff in their comment section and notes and putting pictures and stuff and saying, this is the stuff that I will add once the judging period is up. So, makes sense. Um, always keep it there so that you don't lose it and it doesn't get, uh, woo, like, disappeared into the mind and then you forget what you're going to do. Um, Little Blue Drake says, hello, I'm Vandrider on World Anvil. 
They talked briefly yesterday about my entry, Polisili Mayor. And cool article, Basic Dragon. Just hopped in, so I only saw the tail end, but it's neat. Thank you for joining us, a little blue drink. Um, Basic Dragon says thanks for reading. I appreciate you for sharing. Thank you so much. Um, little blue Jake, I like your name, says Basic Dragon. Yes, it's a nice, cute little name. Um, Dragon Friends. <laughs> Sounds fun. Gibraltar Prime says thanks for the tooltip idea. It's good to see it in this article. Yes, tooltips are nice. I like to add them. Um, who's next? Overlord Forte is here. And your name is Lord Forte. I will go uh, to you next. Uh, also, Little Blue Drake, please use the Little Wisp icon at the bottom of the screen. Your Little Wisps to buy the first option that says, read my article, please. And please put your username on World Anvil in there so that I can see it and I can find you in the spreadsheet. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I'm going to find Lord... Forte. Oh, you're right there. All these people, you guys said Wednesday evening stream. I should have known that you would all actually show up. Thank you for showing up. Um, uh, Overlord Forte says, and Twitch assails me with five repeated advertisements, so I'll be around to hear when that's done. Oh no! So I don't want to start the um, article reading of uh, Overlord Forte before they are able to see so I'm not going to read it yet um, let me see Overlord Forte got it all right once uh, ads are done we will go over to their article uh, in the meantime I will just get it together for uh, to click in the chat so that you guys can all pull it up. Just got two ads, says Basic Dragon. At least it was for games. <laughs> Little Blue Drake says three of four. Ah, oh, man. You guys are just getting bumbled with ads. All right. So in the meantime, uh, while the ads are running, I'm going to say let's do a steering contest to those who are watching in the future. Ah, all right, that's it. Uh, Rugrat1 says, hello, hello, Rugrat1. And you might wonder why I was staring at the screen. I was trying to do a, uh, a staring contest with the person who was watching in the future who didn't have to see ads. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to have to figure out what I do when ads are running. And staring contest doesn't sound very good because um, those ads were long, as I've heard. So I would be holding my eyes open for a long time thank you so much for uh returning you're gonna hear again great 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 i tried to wait for you and there is your nivok lady of the glimmering snow and i've posted the um link in the chat nivok or nivak i think it's nivok not sure spring heel says weird i haven't gotten any ads yet well yeah, um, somebody else said that before, and then they got, like, five ads, so hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but, uh, I have just become affiliate, so I have no idea what the ads are doing, and I cannot see them myself. So, hopefully, it's not too bad, but I will try to get to, to it, and I will try to, um, you know, figure out what's going on with those ads when I can. Tales of Veltrona. Navak, Lady of the Glimmering Snow. So, Nivak. Nivak. Okay, great. There is a pronunciation. I love it. Pronunciations are key. I appreciate them very much. Uh, Nivak, Lady of the Glimmering Snow. That's a nice title. Has a ring to it. I do see this is quite a long article, so if you do not mind me skimming through a little bit, I could just skim through a little bit. Um, but yes, uh, Viltrona is full of weird words, so pronunciation is a concern for me, says Overlord Forte. Yes, 
totally understandable and I'm glad that you are taking your readers into consideration with those. It's clocking at 3,000 words, feel free to skim. Thank you! Um, cause yeah, it, I was looking at the sidebar like, whoa, it's a long one, so let's go. Adapted to both cold and danger, the Urzum attack are a race of Urni, or Urni, and there's a link to that, who long lived upon Favrengars, and there's a link to that. For Nivok, life was ever a struggle and a constant journey, scouring the lands for food, safety, and soup. Her great tribe ever migrated between the heartlands of Favrengars and Vote Yogurs, southern reaches. There's a link to that as well. Be it freezing winters or blistering summers, their way was that of family, and they braved Veltrona's unforgiving wildernesses together, a tradition she saw tested time and again as blood spilled upon fresh snows and screams were lost to howling winds. Um, yes, so this already it has a very uh, heavy storyteller vibe and the the descriptions are very uh, interesting and you know they hold you and you're like whoa wow I like the descriptions um, by the age of an elder the constant struggle had borne a terrible weight down upon her those she sought guidance from eventually faded away and now youngsters look towards her in return but Nivok had few answers to give. Worse, the lands of Favrengars were charging and were changing, imperceptibly to most, but clearly to her. Try as she might to convince her fellows that they too must change, her voice fell on deaf ears, so she continued, struggling alongside them as they as hope drained away. Mm. So this is a very story, um, story-centered article, and uh, the descriptions are very enthralling. Yes, um, let's see the um, description of the character: dark gray, irises in the six pro six-pronged shape of a snowflake. Oh wow, that's interesting. White silver hair coloration, I mean, white silver coloration of the eyes. I can imagine this character with like snowflake around. That's, that's, that's interesting. Long black length hair trimmed and shaped in regal flow, a mixed color between sky blue and dark ice. Snowy white fur, mm. be speckled with gray. The tips terminate into an icy blue color. Her skin is pale colored, but warmer in hue than her snowy fur. So I have discovered what she is. She's species of Ernie, which let's see what she is. A flight capable species of arthropod, monster kind. Uh, inspiration says giant moths and fantasy elves. So yeah, wow. I was imagining as human before, but now I understand what she is. She's something else. Interesting. Um, let's see. Ooh, there's lots of fighting and things going on. She refused to surrender, though. She's filled with a sense of purpose her life ever lacked. She strode into harsh blizzards to hunt prey, gather vital firewood, and fend off unspeakable dangers. Aching, starving, and her wings and skin splitting from frostbite, she pressed on with uncompromising determination. When summer swept away the harshest colds, many had yet survived thanks to her efforts. Soon their nomadic tribe returned with friends in tow, all of them surprised that Nev Nevok and her fellows were still alive. Wow. So it seems that even though uh, troubles were happening upon her, she was pressing on, and she was leading her people into victory. Scarce food became plentiful, but distribution and guarding it became complex. Ooh. 
A second great trial came from the south by way of the dreaded raider Merakin. Not sure how to pronounce it. There's not a link to that character either, but they are a native of Karg and infamous for her long-reaching raiding parties. Mm. So she had a plan cloaked under shadow and snow. She harried the raiders. Twin needle swords, tools of precision and utmost purpose. Ah, cutting vital arteries and lethally impaling organs as she sped by. Wow. The wounded survivors piled up, burdening Merakin and straining her supplies. Wow, so she's a skilled fighter as well. Um, let's see, lots of the raiders were slain or terribly wounded. But she was battered and bruised, but she pushed beyond her own limits, limped home at long last. But few raiders Paluka captured spoke feverishly about her ferocious deeds and unrelenting lethality. It inspired many within the city, enamoring them with their otherwise reclusive leader. Word spread like wildfire, and so Nevok's reputation swelled in size and reach. The many traders who came through soon carried these words themselves, spreading them along their routes. Such an accomplishment drew all kinds of attention, as much to Paluka as Ni Nivok herself. So many um, tells of her uh, battles and her victories were spread throughout the land. Um, then this story here uh, ends. And it tells about the physical description. Sculpted from a lifetime of harsh wilderness survival, Nivok is lithe and athletic. Her overall figure is slender with curvy hints buried beneath a fine coat of fluffy fur. As she has gotten on in age, her fur has thinned slightly out. It makes her appear more wispy and floaty rather than the thick, poofy cloudiness that younger Yurni are known for. So, yes, I see now. Um, this is a very uh, detailed, detailed article. Detailed article. Special abilities. It tells of different things she has. Confusion powder. White glint. Rudimentary ice magic. Expert swordsman. And these things all have descriptions as well. It tells their apparel and accessories. They do have clothing, even though they have fur. Head is adorned in a sil simple silver circlet, upon which looping strands of chrysium thread interweave through her hair. So this is interesting character, and a lot of um, a lot of this is very detailed storytelling as well, and the wording that you have is very. Um, story-like like it's enchanting descriptions and stuff like that so yes um uh that is quite a lot and as i said i did put the article link in the chat so that you guys can check it out yourself because it's a lot to go through um but yes 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 well we see that there's a very long article but thank you so much for sharing this uh um, let me ch catch up in the chat. What does it say? Da -da. Must have done the article cue wrong. I'll try to get it up quietly. Um, you did do it correctly, little blue drake. I see you. Uh, Basic Dragon says, I need to make a pronunciation guide for my world of Ursoga. Urs Ursgoga. There's a lot of Swedish words used there. Yes, uh, Cedrahan, it says Sweden is nice. Yes, I like when different languages are used. That's nice. Um, it can be long for a live reading, says Overlord Forte. Yes, it's quite... Uh... And there's a lot of talk about Sweden here. Live 
up in the north of Sweden and do not like the winter, says Basic Dragon, though Cedrahanet's sister is in Gothenburg. Gothenburg. Borg. I'm not sure how to pronounce that either. Um, Overlord Forte says there's a missing link. Yes. Um, da, da, da. So much detail, says Little Blue Drake. Have you been working on this character for a long time? And uh, Overlord Forte says Voltrona itself is two to three years old now. Uh, Nivok is our newest main character. She got drafted in last month. Well, guess what? It's uh, still an interesting article, and it shows that you put a lot of, of thought into it, into writing this article, and you added so many details. And uh, like I said, this is one of those kind of long articles that is going to be hard to put a whole sidebar that's very long. So if you are um, a grandmaster, at least, I believe. Let me see. What am I doing? Uh, life styles. I'll go here. I will show you what you call a sticky sidebar. Sticky sidebar. When you go down, you will see that even though this is long, see the contents are long, this sidebar will not move until you get to the end of the page. So this is called a sticky sidebar. And that reminds me, I'm supposed to be sending somebody a link to how to make a si sticky sidebar. And I'm going to have to send it to them because... I mentioned this to them in the stream and they were like, well, I need to be able to do that. And then I'm so um, scattered everywhere. So I did not even send it to them. So I'm going to try to reach out to them uh, soon and let them know about that. Um, more about uh, Sweden. Great. Um, but yes, thank you so much for sharing this article. And as I said, if the sidebar is just not going to be able to reach this long, um, unless you want to put some of the story maybe in uh, spoilers and stuff like that so that it's not as long. If not, you can just make the sticky sidebar if you have that ability. And uh, it is using CSS, so if you are not able to use the CSS, then uh, you might not be able to do that uh, feature. But if you are able to, I would suggest to do that or either to extend the rest of it. Uh, I did see that you did have links to a lot of things that we would like to know more about, which was great. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, like I said, it was a very storyteller article. And it had beautiful descriptions and beautiful uh, prose and stuff like that. So thank you for sharing that article. Uh, Overlord Forte says, spoiling to condense the summary story is an idea. Yes. Um, sometimes so that just an overview of the page doesn't look like it's too, you know, um, overwhelming at the beginning. If you really just want to skip the story and see about the character's traits, you can go ahead and do that. And then if you want to learn about the story, you can expand it or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, next, we are going on to Little Blue Drake, a.k.a. Van Ryder's article. And it is Polis City Mayor. And I have linked that in the chat as well. Um, so let's see. Um, thank you so much again to Overlord Forte for letting me read your article on stream. Uh, let's see. This article isn't that long. Polis City Mayor. Mayor of Polis City elected official. He was elected after the alien event. And there's a link to what that is because we don't know what this is. Ooh, otherwise unremarkable day on Earth. The skies filled with alien battleships fighting an unknown war. Whoa, so this world already has space aliens. All right, and thus ran on campaign that included superhumans and constituents. He ran for office saying that he would bring safety and stability to the city, an appealing message which won him the election waned in power after the rise of superhumans as the organizations they formed developed more cultural society currency with people than the mayoral office. As such, he has a small rivalry with Councillor Smoke, and there's a link to that person as well. I feel like Councillor Smoke sounds like a familiar person. Did 
Did I read this before? I think I did read this. Was he? Oh, I get it. Okay, so I think I know what happened. Um, all right, cool. Little Blue Drake says, What I'd say about my injuries first is that I joined World Anvil about a week before summer camp started, so I'm very new to everything. That's totally fine. You know, um, I feel like one stream... And I was like, oh, no, I should really get off of here and read this later because I didn't have permission at uh, first. But I saw the name Counselor Smoke on a stream when I was writing during my summer camp. And I said, hey, this guy sounds uh, like an interesting guy. And it was like he was preventing the superhero, uh, super villains from having the same uh, goal so that he can, like, keep peace in the villains area and that was funny and i was like wow this is a guy i said i need to stop reading this on stream because i don't have permission um but it was a very interesting character and uh yeah i think that i saw that first so little blue drake yes says i had them as the entry for this category then changed it later understand he did fit a category that showed up better which was a, a person considered villainous or monstrous yes that's a good thing that you can change. Uh, it says he's changed a bit, but I want to bring that element back. Um, well, yeah, it's it's exciting to see how characters uh, evolve and change and develop as they go along. And sometimes you can have conversations with your character and figure out things about them that you didn't know. But I do remember reading kind of about him and was like, wow, this seems like an interesting guy. Um, but yeah, I do that this looks familiar. Anyways, yes, sorry for getting off of the Polis City Mayor article, because that's what we were looking at. Um, yeah. He had a rival with Counselor Smoke, who he perceives as usurping his power in the city. Um, physical description, aging man living a sedentary life. Always seen wearing a suit and loud tie. That's a good, fun, uh, addition. Previously a lawyer who worked with the district attorney. He had a successful career as a lawyer, which helped his campaign when he ran for mayor. Failures and embarrassments. He was neglected during a time when the local government saw a loss of support and confidence as the Council of Superhumans saw to the direct needs to superhumans. Um, motivation, seeking power and recognition from others. While he's able to appeal to the normal... I think it's normal. This is Norma. Unpowered population of Polis City. He has less support among superhumans who generally turn to Counselor Smoke and Council of Superhumans. Hygiene? Impeccable. Uh, Rain. He ran on a platform promising stability in the face of chaos caused by superhumans appearing across the world. He promised to help superhumans integrate into society, but this was less popular. Otherwise, his time in office is largely unremarkable. Uh, through his time at the DA office, he had previous ties to other local politicians and authority figures which helped him get elected. He is a charming but not particularly enthusiastic person. He's perceived as stable and safe, but not exciting or bringing major change. Interesting character. There's a very short sidebar. Hair is turning gray and receding, and we know that he is in his 50s. But other than that, there's not much description about the character, but this is still a very interesting article. Uh, thank you for sharing it. I feel like, though, this, of course, seems like uh, it will need a lot more added because there's not a lot of information about him. In fact, there's not even really his name even. But I should not be one to judge because I have a guy named someone. <laughs> And his name is not revealed either. So maybe that's just how the mayor is. Or maybe it's just a placeholder. Not sure. Um, Blue Drake says typo, I guess, with Norma. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah. But I would suggest to maybe add some links, of course, uh, to things that we might want to know about. And maybe add some article blocks. Like the alien event, you can actually add an article block on the side. And it will help to fill up this sidebar here. Uh, even if you don't have a portrait of the character, you can add a little bit more description about the character. And things like that to help to uh, fill up that sidebar if you need something. Um, yes, so Little Blue Drake says that's fair. And I have trouble with names, so it's always the last thing I add. Understandable. 
Um, sometimes I can have full-blown characters in my head, and then when somebody says, well, what's their name? I say, I don't know. <laughs> but I know uh, how many children they have. I know when they were born. I know what they do for a living. And then it's like, well, what are their name? I don't know. It's because I just don't know. That's not the most important thing that comes up in my mind, personally. The name of a character. Um, also, Little Blue Drake says it's educational to watch this and see what other people do. Yes, it is. So thank you so much again for sharing this little, cute little article. Um, little Blue Drake. And I'm uh, happy to explore your world a bit more because uh, this seems like an exciting world with superheroes and superpowers and everything like that. Uh, Rugrat1 says, I lean heavily on the fantasy name generator. Yes, uh, name generators are great when you just can't think of anything. Um, next we have Springhilled Jack on World Anvil. Thank you for joining us. There we are. Forge Master Montgomery Grimm. Already an interesting name. We're going to drop that in the chat so that you guys can go ahead and check him out. Um, Little Blue Drake says, I know it was bare bones, but I'm glad you wear it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. I appreciate it because you know what? It's most important to just get those words out on the page and, and don't be afraid about it being bare bones. You have it there, and that's the good thing. You can build on the bones. So that's awesome, and I appreciate you guys sharing your articles. Let's learn about Forge Master Montgomery Grimm by Spring Hill Jack. All right. Um, Forge Master Montgomery Grimm, generally referred to as Old Monty, is responsible for the industrialization of the Cinderholm Metalworks. Old Monty is a particularly dour, bald dwarf with a neatly trimmed white beard and a pair of impressively expressive, bushy, caterpillar like eyebrows. He currently oversees the maintenance and expansion of Cinderholm Forges and takes great care in doing so after all. He was the one who originally saw to their construction. With his leadership and dedication to the metalworks, I mean, with his leadership and dedication, the metalworks grew to the cell they are now, and the production increase in raw ingots fueled the growth of the city and put it on the map. Though old, he has not stopped his improvements in efficiency of the refining process and machines. With the passage of the years, he has gained a reputation not as innovator in technology, but as a master of application. He is one of the best people in the application of new technology ideas or techniques, with an innate sense of how to new, how to new, oh, how new technologies, I think you added an extra two there, how new technologies work effectively within constraints, be they space, cost, etc. The title of Forge Master was given to him upon the completion of the first level of the Metal Works. After receiving this honor, instead of sitting on his laurels as he could have, he began the he began future proofing the smelting capacity by beginning construction on the second floor of the Metal Works. Old Monty is the embodiment of forward thinking and dedication. He is greatly loved by the city. He helped build, and while times have moved forward, he has not allowed the city to fall behind in its production capacity, thus maintaining its prominence as a mayor trade hub for process ore. In Cinderholm, it is often said, Forge Master Montgomery Grimm will hold on to his title until his death. And even then, death will have a hard time pulling it from the old dwarf. So that was a nice little neat article. And it was told in a storytelling form. Very short to the point. It told a comprehensive story of how this man is a great leader of his people. Um, what I would suggest is, of course, links to other things that we might be interested in like center home metal works if there's an article about that i don't know it might not be done yet um 
and then just maybe just putting like there's not too much that I'm like totally spaced out about but it would be nice to have like little article blocks on the sidebar maybe a character portrait and if you don't have a portrait at least a little description of him here in the sidebar um and then that should be all because there's not much in this body so there shouldn't take much to uh, fill up the sidebar with article blocks or different descriptions of the character maybe a quote from him and that could help to make the sidebar even with the contents and then you'll have a nice little clean article another thing you could do is to hide the sidebar altogether since there's nothing there but i would suggest to you know just have something there so it's not just a word wall um, but thanks again for allowing me to read your nice little article about Forge Master Montgomery Grimm. I like his name, by the way, as well. Um, let's see. My page formatting is not super exciting, says uh, Spring Hill Jack. And are there ads? I don't know. There might be ads going on right now. If there are ads, please tell me. If there's not an ad going on, Please don't tell me that there is one because there's not one. Um, I don't see anybody saying that there's ads. So I think that I will continue talking. Um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was I saying? Spring Hill Jack says page four formatting wasn't uh, super exciting. Yeah, it's not super exciting, but it sometimes, oh uh, man. Yes, there is an ad. Energy drink again. So let's do Saren Contest. Ready? Three, two, one. Trap. I lost. Because I have a ceiling fan that is going um, and blowing air into my eye. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Rock, paper, scissors. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. All right. Did he win? Let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, a creepy guy rubbing an Apple commercial. What kind of commercial is that? Weird. Um, let me know when the commercials are over, you guys. Um, yep, yep, yep. And other than that, I think that was it. This is now cheap pizza commercial. All right, so there's more. Let's try this staring contest again. One more time. Three, two, one. And discover and done, says Rugrat1. Are we done with the commercials? I think we're done with the commercials. Well, those people who are watching in the future didn't see commercials I just uh did some rock paper scissors and some steering contests which everybody probably won the steering contest because i have a ceiling fan on that's blowing air into my eye so i did not keep my eyes open for very long um i'm glad everybody else is back that is watching it live and thank you for enduring those commercials i will try to see what i can do about those later but as I was saying, um, Spring Hill Jack, yes, you're, uh, you said your paid formatting is not very exciting, but that's okay. Sometimes simple is better. I like how it's just very neat and it tells a little story and it's not too long, but the thing about it is just the sidebar. If you could just add something to the sidebar so that it doesn't look as naked, you know, then it will be totally fine. So thank you so much for sharing this little, nice little article with us. Uh, let's see what else. Basic Dragon had said something a lot. Um, sometimes I have their names before their personality. Sometimes I also know all about them and have big trouble naming them. I also go through baby name sites when it comes to general names. I do that too. <laughs> Several years ago, dad came rushing into a room where me and my sibling were hanging out and cried, Who is pregnant? We went like, what? And it said, somebody has searched for baby names on the computer. So dad you know we write stories oh <laughs> understandable that is funny too um because i would have a baby name book and it'll be like why are you looking in the baby name book i look up baby names on the computer now but yeah we used to always just look in the baby name book for fun even me and my sibling would do that and uh just to see what names mean and because we also write 
So we would be writing different characters and naming them. So looking at a name book is fun. You don't have to actually have an actual human that you're trying to name. Uh, story humans are good too. Or story creatures, pets, animals, um, other anthropomorphic things. Um, Spring Hill Jack says, I appear to have been asleep at the keyboard when I wrote this. No, not at all. It's very nice. It's just that, uh, yeah, there are a couple of, you know, grammar and stuff uh, issues, but it's okay. Um, that can just be fixed with just a uh, quick edit through. Uh, it's a nice one. Uh, Rugrat1 says, our reader is great for humanesque portraits. True. And then there is the whole thing about the ads. So we're caught up in the chat. Great, great, great. Uh, thank you again to Spring Hill Jack for allowing us to read your article. Um, is somebody else uh, also... Did somebody else have an article for me to read in the chat? If you did, please let me know uh, right now by redeeming a read my article, please, using one wisp. And let me know what your World Anvil username is. And yeah, while we are waiting, let's see. Da, 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 da. I guess, um,. We could check just a couple more articles and then we can um, end the stream. So this is another person um, who might not be present in the chat, but I'm going to link their article. Le? 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 Not sure. Is that an E or an I? I mean, L or an I? It's an I. I? Eh? eh Sayla? Not sure how to pronounce this, but I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, okay. Aye ah, yeah. was the third successor of Iride, the Lord Giver, after Yukyu and Stoa. Artifacts in her clan's museum include a deca of hers with an intricate red pattern, making it very likely that she was the first leader to have red-green vision. And already, there's a lot of things that we don't know what it is. Uh, so we tell who Iride the Lawgiver is. It tells what Yukehu is. It tells what Stua is. It tells what a Deka is. And it tells what a leader is, and it tells what Red Green Vision is. So I already applaud them for uh, linking all those um, kinds of things that we don't know about. Um, she has carried on Stuwa's patronage uh, of the sciences and the tradition that was swiftly becoming the leadership challenge. Another link to another article. But she is mostly known for presiding over the first repair project on the Twin Pillars. And there's a link to that as well. Aye was born just before the start of the battle with the Stone Menace. I feel like I've read that before. Battle with the Stone Menace. And it dominates many of her earliest moments. She developed an attachment to storytellers. Let me tell what it is and others passing on the traditions of her clan from before the battle commenced. She had also seen the confusing and sometimes heated debates that arose following the unification of clans, and there's a link, with regard to tradition and clan autonomy, and took great interest in the debates from there. Yuki Hughes, um, let me see if there's a pronunciation here. There is not careful balancing act between each clan's traditions and the goal of a unified Stinza entity, at least militarily, and Stoua's diversion of pent-up energy towards scientific advancement in all areas inspired Aya herself to get involved. Although the roles for the leadership challenge had yet to calcify, to the point where there was still debate whether it should be done at all, Aya also agreed to the ordeal, continuing the precedent set by Stoua and, at least in her mind, carrying on the customer, 
customs of her ancestors from before the battle with the stone menace. Upon her success, she inherited a unified Sinza clans. I mean, she inherited a unified Stinza clans, developing more modern scientific and artistic institutions, which she also did her best to foster. However, the defining moment of her tenure was a freak weather event, and there's a link to what is referring to the movements of the Snow Warrior, that swept through the basin, damaging the twin pillars as it passed. Aya oversaw both its repairs and the construction of a special shielding device for the stone monument, an idea which would expand with time to the concept of settlement shields. There's another link. Following the ascension of her own successor, Aya evolved herself in the still ongoing work of cultural, cultural preservation amongst her own clan and the wide past Stinza more broadly. So very interesting character, uh, once again. And yes, uh, we have a little sidebar that says this is her species is the Stinza. And we can learn more about it. Hmm. Interesting characters. Um, and then there's not really a detailed description of her as an individual. Um, so that would be nice to have either a character portrait for her so we can see her or either just a description of her, how she looks would be nice to add. Also, there's a lot of good links here in the uh, text. So if you want to put some article blocks here, you can, and that will help to fill up the sidebar as well. Uh, so thanks again to Rudy SB9 for sharing Aya. Um, that's another thing. The only other thing is that I would love more pronunciation uh, guidance because I do not know how to pronounce this name. At first, I thought it was a lowercase l, but it seems that it's an i. So, I, uh, I don't know still how to pronounce it. Uh, yes, Sayla. Sorry if I'm just butchering her name. But yes, I appreciate you sharing the article um, for us to read on stream. Um, does anybody else have any articles that they would like me to read? If you would like me to read, um, please do. A redeem. If not, we will move on to one more, and I think we're going to end the stream. Uh, Little Blue Drake says another neat article I'm really curious about, Aya in her world. So am I. So, yes, I, w I would love to read more about that world. Um, I like the layout as well. Uh, we can go on to General Bleakwing by Arach Cobra. General Bleakwing by Arach Cobra. And, yep. This looks like a long article, and I am going to, unfortunately, have to skim through this one. Uh, but thank you so much for sharing, Cobra. So this is a General Bleakwing, a.k.a. Red Feather, Red Tail, Rosewing, Ironwing. He him. Bleakwing has had both ups and downs through his life. Eratite from the Silver Isles, he climbed up through the ranks of the Silver Armada during the Age of War. With a combination of bravery and leadership skills, he eventually became a respected and beloved general of the army. But the very same traits that, he, that had carried him so far would eventually lead to his downfall. Interesting. Uh, he's currently isolated in the Toxic Zone. That's an interesting thing. And there's not a link to it. I have appear I mean it appears that um, this is probably an article that's not yet done the reason why there's not a link to it um, but he's currently 189 years old uh, dark red eyes dark red skin pink feathers silvery highlight on wings and a rear that resembles skulls 
avian race. He's an avian race. So some kind of flying feathered creature. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, information about this character. Bleakling's strength and sturdiness have been boosted by the procedures, leaving him supernaturally powerful in those regards. However, a combination of old war injuries and the way he was mangled by the experiments means he has to move with deliberation and care. Um, he has quite a number of inju injuries, left eye heavily damaged, making him near blind. His beak has suffered a notable chip, making it frailer and harder to use. Oh man, it seems that he uh, got lots of scars and lots of injuries in the war. But he's uh, some type of bird-like character because he has a beak. Um, bleached feathers. They're skilled dancers and Bleakwing is no exception. As a commander, he learned how to uses sensuality oh wow so he um, got up in the ranks with uh, interesting methods it appears um, he can absorb poisons and toxins dark magic in a similar way that's beneficial to his health interesting this has made his natural musk even stronger and even more nausea inducing to anyone trying to take a bite out of him. A side effect was that it altered his body metabolism, reducing his need for food and liquid. His natural magic has also been altered by the experiment. Mm. So he got a lot of experimentation done on him as well. He has service cap though it's been modified to bear his new name. He has access to a suit of now heavily customized high-tech impact absorbing power armor developed by the Silver Armada's R&D department, which is named the Wing Guard. He has named it the Wing Guard. This advanced armor covers most of his body when worn, except his wings, feet, and rear. Over the years after his breakout, he's been working on both to allow him to wear them despite his increased body size. Interesting. So we've told a lot of information about his personal life from when he was born and how he uh, went into war and things like that. Um, he received some basic school while living in Hook Bay beyond his one year of training at the military. He's also taken some additional courses to improve his leadership and knowledge of modern tactics and equipment when time permitted. He was employed in the Silver Armada, rising all the way from recruit to general. Interesting. While Bleakling was not responsible, the loss of Fort Stonewall was his first taste of defeat. It was an embarrassment. Mm. Even though it says it wasn't his fault, he counts that as one of his embarrassments. Allowing himself to be tricked into becoming a guinea pig, putting him in a position where he was no longer able to protect the people under his former command is a great source of personal shame. Uh, then all the experiments also left mental trauma and scars in his mind. Despite the damage to his mind, though, Bleakwing remains sharp, observant, and strategic, while his memory has developed holes and his isolation has left him without proper socialization for decades, he remains both insightful and charismatic. He believes deeply in the responsibility of leadership. A leader's job is to lead, not to be served. As he would put it, he understands that sacrifices and death are part of warfare but believes that one should endeavor to minimize casualties where possible and respect any sacrifice that has to be made. These ideals persist even in his current state, though they have now also been accompanied by a new belief in bloody retribution. Uh, abuse of authority is taboos. He can accept the people in charge make mistakes, 
but intentional abuse of subordinates infuriates him. He avoids relying too much on the new abilities granted by the experiments, and he feels that overuse would on some level validate what was done to him. So he doesn't uh, appreciate uh, the experiments that he had to endure. Um, let's see. He fishes and cooks as a hobby, though it is, is still kind of new to the latter. Enjoys group dancing and general exercise. While direct, Bleakwing has a very formal way of talking. Someone would say it's even a bit pompous. He tends to avoid curse words unless angry. Um, he's well paid, but never stingy, often using his money to reward his troops with pay bonuses or by buying extra things for them. Whatever assets he himself had left were lost when he was confined to the laboratory that would become part of the toxic zone. So yes, uh, there's lots, 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 lots more to discover about this character. But um, for now, yes, we will leave it there because that was quite a long article. Once again, uh, filling up the sidebar this long would be kind of a bit uh, excessive. So maybe putting a um, sticky sidebar there or either like uh, has been also suggested, we can take like this and put it in a full width footer so that like right at this cutoff point, the rest of the words can just be straight under the sidebar and not have to worry about, you know, there being a blank, empty, naked space right here. Um, but yeah, other than that, I would think that this is a very uh, informative article and there's a lot of story to be read in this article as well. Uh, I don't see any portraits of the character, but there was a description, so it is good to have that imagery of him. Um, once again, yes, thank you to Arak Cobra for sharing that article. And now, uh, yes, I appreciate all of you guys for being here with uh, me in this uh, stream. Uh, thank you so much. I think that we will call it quits here. Um, so I appreciate all of you guys who have presented your articles. And I appreciate all of you guys for just hanging out and chatting, for just, you know, uh, being you guys. Uh, thank you so much for all the support, all the follows, all of the uh, chatting, and also for enduring those ads if you had to endure them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call it a night, and I'm going to see what I can do about those ads. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, little blue drake. And thanks to everyone for sharing. Yes, thanks to everyone for sharing. I appreciate you guys. Um, so, God bless and have a blessed night, everybody. Uh, Basic Dragon says, thanks, it was fun. Yes, I'm glad you guys had fun. This was one of the more chill streams, actually, believe it or not. Um, there was no uh, wild zoo guy to start hijacking the stream and stuff this time. So, I think I should really quickly end it before he pops up and does something weird <laughs> again. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you again, everybody, and have a blessed night, or a uh, blessed day, or wherever it is, whatever time zone you're in, thank you so much for joining me, and I do pray you have a blessed remainder of the day, evening, night, afternoon, and happy time zone wherever you are. Alright, goodbye. Uh, remember also, I'm going to, um, stream again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. And uh, I plan to stream tomorrow evening as well at 8 p.m. Eastern. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, have a blessed one. Bye, guys.